Let's go. Hello, everybody. I'm really lucky today. I've got two amazing women from the other side of the planet, which is even better, and it's going to be part of what we talk about. And I've got Kim Selby, who is Ignite Your Spark, and we'll <laughs> learn more about that later. I know a bit about it. And I've got Dr. L Lottie Valentin. I'm sorry, my tongue went everywhere then. Dr. Lottie is connections and medicine well let's say medicine and magic is what i was thinking together and all three of us um are about magic in our own way and magic's a sort of simple word for it so we're going to talk today and we just had a little sort of fling around the room of what we might talk about and connection and whether or not we're actually fixers so, who would like to set off? Shall I pick somebody? Kim, I'm going to pick somebody. <laughs> great, great. I would love to. What I really think that is so important, as I said prior to you recording, is connections and the magic of connections. And if there is one thing that this podcast, doing my podcast, Ignite Your Spark, over the past three years has taught me is the value of connections, maintaining those connections, and growth through those connections. And I believe it's magic that we were all brought together. I mean, I have kind of chills right now. You know, we all have that sort of light colored hair. <laughs> And we're oh, all aging, Kim. Aging. 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 <laughs> and we're all of like minds. And yet we all have something different and unique to share with the world. And in terms of being fixers, well, I'm definitely not a fixer. Dr. Lottie, you're a doctor. You're a magic fairy woman, Ellen. I'm just, I feel like I'm just a human here, hopefully to inspire others that you can do whatever you want to do at any age. That's my jam. Yeah, I think that's really fantastic. Lossie, are you a fixer? No, you know, I wouldn't call myself a fixer because it doesn't matter if I look at it medically or spiritually because you can't fix another person. I can help them on their healing journey if it's a physical problem. I can suggest different supplements or pharmaceuticals or whatever it is that they need. Or if it's more of a spiritual or emotional problem, again, it requires the person or the client to take on that part of the journey to create healing. And I can guide them on that journey, whether it's emotional, spiritual, or physical, I can guide them so that they can create healing for themselves. But I am never the fixer. I am never the person who creates their healing, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual. It is always the client that creates the healing for themselves. So yeah. that's how I look at it. I'm, I am not definitely not a fixer. It, but Ellen, is anyone a fixer? Just our own selves, right? Y yes. I mean, I, I do take responsibility for looking after myself, as I think we all do. But in a sense, and I'm going to take this around the corner of towards what you were talking about, is that I fix myself, but only with connections to other people, like you mm -hmm. two ladies, because it's through connection and it's through that mirroring that I can get. And I come to you, Kim, or to you, Dr. Lottie, and sort of say, oh, this is what, 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 you know, and have a sort of freak out. And then you mirror back to me. And also, you ask me to dig into myself. And Dr. Lottie was saying about ancestral problems and things like that. And they are ancestral problems in all of us. And as long as we don't look at them, then, you know, we're just going to stay the same. We can't fix anything. You're just putting a Band-Aid over the wound. Um, or taking a pill to stop your indigestion without changing your diet at all. So I'm not a fixer, but I would call myself an enabler. I show people through, why don't you try this and see what happens kind of method, 
how to learn to fix themselves. How do you both yeah. feel about that? Well, first of all, I think that's an interesting term that you use enabler, because here in the US, you know, it, it's not a good term, right, Dr. Lottie? I mean, would, you know, we say, yo, you're just an enabler, meaning you're not letting, do you know what I mean? Like you're not letting that person do their own thing. You're enabling them in, if you like let your child live at home until they're 40, you're enabling them. You're not letting them go out into the world. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I think of that word as, is that just me? No, no, I you no, I see what you're saying because here in the United States, the that term can be used the wrong way and it can have a bad connotation to it. You're just an enabler, right? <laughs> but right. in in terms of Ellen, I would say she enables people to find a path to healing themselves. So it's 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 the it's a good way of using the word. And also it's just the cultural differences in yes how we are looking at different words and how different words in our society here in the United States have become um, like a bad term. So Kim and I probably would not use that term like we are enabling people because then we right. become enablers and that's bad here in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> so, but it's fascinating because in England, apparently that is not the same way they interpret that word. No, and so it has a different meaning to them. To them, it's more... I am being the helpful provider in helping you find peace or healing in your own life. But here in the United States, it has a different connotation to it. That is absolutely fascinating because I didn't know that before. <laughs> and um, thank you very much because I will be careful not to say it too much in that sense when I'm meeting with um, my clients across the water because I'll make sure they understand me. No, I... As you said, Lottie, I enable people to help themselves. Yeah. And that's usually, well, most of my work is quite practical in many ways in that somebody comes with a problem, and this is going to be really simplistic, but just for the sake, I'll say, how about you just go and sit beside my pond and listen to the waterfall? And take your question with you, but just lay it out there. Don't worry at it. And just sit and listen to the waterfall for 10, 15 minutes. And see what happens. And mm. that is the sort of enabling that I would mean. It works. I, it's one of the ones that I do use. And it works. And people come back, oh, oh, because I, I think in a sense I gave them permission to go and be still. Yeah. You know, I think of you, both of you, hopefully me too, but as a guide, I don't want to say teacher, but you are guiding, you are guiding people back to their authentic self. And it is beautiful that you have a location where you can actually guide people to go and sit. Mm. It's more challenging virtually, and it's more challenging when you are on your own and someone guides you to do something it's it's sometimes a little difficult to do that on your own it can be although i i work an awful lot online because i i know people all over the world and this is this is the way to con connect with somebody in that so i've gradually learned to after talking with them for a minute or three to ah that's something they like let's ask them to take themselves there in imagination. And I don't know whether you ladies use it, but I find I use my voice a lot. And so my voice will lead them into something. You just sit still and sit quiet. Now, just imagine you're sitting by a river that you really love and just listen to it trickling over the stones. And I find that can actually work with people but I agree, if they can actually go out and sit beside some water, hey. <laughs> it's I work similarly. So when I work with people for ancestral healing, for example, we always end it <clears throat> with a like 15 minute meditative journey or it's a combination of a, of a soul journey or a shamanic journey. 
And sometimes, uh, you know, spirit animals will show up uh, during that journey, but I guide them on a meditation. So that all they have to do is close their eyes and they just sit there. And we talk to often the, the soul of the mother, their mother's soul, um, the soul of their father, because many times it's the family dynamics and the way they were raised. And there is a lot of unhealed wounds that are present in their current life that they can't overcome. But it's just, it's fascinating because I work remotely. I work on Zoom. Yep. But when we go into this healing and I close my eyes and they close their eyes and I sort of disappear because it's a combination of going into trance for me, like trance healing. Mm. So it's a combination of trance healing and a shamanic journey and a meditation all in one <laughs> that it's just, it is become how I work. But when we go on this soul journey and we talk to the souls of their ancestors, they, it doesn't matter if they're, if they're still alive in this dimension mm. or if they're in the spirit world, it doesn't matter because we're connecting soul to soul. And we bring up all the different issues that they had because now we understand where they're coming from because that's what we did for the previous 45 minutes is figuring out why is it that I'm having problems with relationships? Why is it that I'm having problems stepping into myself? I know I'm supposed to get that job, but I can't go for it. I don't know what it is that's hindering me. I'm supposed to do a merger with this other company, but every time I do, I feel terrified. Why is that? I know it's the right decision. But it comes from the ancestors or the it's a combination of what they inherited on their ancestral lineage, their DNA, their through quantum physics, right? We're all connected through time and space and their own upbringing and the environment that they were in when they were a child. Mm -hmm. But then when we do the healing at the end, it is fascinating how much gets healed. And I have people telling me that they did one that, you know, for years, they've seen counselors, they've done all these different things. They have one session and all of a sudden things click into place. And I would say that is the magic. And I think, you know, we all work with this magic because it's sometimes hard to understand exactly how it works, but it's a combination of the intention. So we know the intention experience, the experiments from Lynn McTaggart and all the research she has done. And so when we set that intention combined with the soul journey, combined with the issues that we found, and it all comes to light, they understand, they see it now clearly. And I think it's fascinating because I've worked with, I've worked with many physicians and counselors, psychotherapists, mm -hmm. and it's fascinating. I've had them tell me, I do this all day long. I do this for other people, but I couldn't see it because it's my own family. And it's almost like, we are blinded. It's like we're standing in the middle of the woods, but we can't see the trees. It's just, it, we're just so close to the problem. And it's also an emotional tie to the issues and we can't see it clearly. But as soon as we step into that role and we can peel that onion, you know, the, the client can see it and then we can create healing. And then everything shifts with that because it's just the awareness. Yeah. It's the awareness yeah, and creating the healing that shifts it. You're the guide, you know, or as Ellen would say, the enabler, you're the guide, you're the enabler yeah. to help them get to that root part of themselves to unleash all of the crap for lack yeah. of a better word. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. very true because it's just, it has to just be, once we see it, we can heal it. That's how I look at it. Because you can't yeah. see it. If you can't see it, you're doing all these healings. I used to do that. Oh, I'm sending healing to myself. I'm sending healing to the spirit world. I'm sending healing everywhere. I still had the same problems. And it's not until I could untangle that and say, where is this coming from? And then once I could see where it's coming from, oh, there it is. Now I understand. Now I can heal it. Yeah. So it's that, Dr. Lottie, that awareness. Is that true of physical ailments as well as for emotional I would say, yes, there is definitely a tie to the physical component. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, it's dangerous to just say, uh, does all their physical problems come from the emotional? It depends how you look at it, because mm -hmm. we also incarnate. We are mm -hmm. born with tumors, right? Those children that are born with tumors and have cancer when they're age two, they didn't sit in the womb and created the tumors. Okay, so part of it is how we come, how we're created. Um, and maybe we, you know, there's another part to this where 
we incarnate to have certain experiences in this life. So I did I incarnate to have my two near death experiences and be sick for uh, you know, almost 12 years, six, for six years, I was really sick, bone marrow suppression, was sick all the time. Did I incarnate for that? Yeah, I definitely did. I incarnated to have that experience. And I know that there are um, astrologers out there that are looking at the astrological charts mm -hmm. of people that have near death experiences. And I know he looked at my chart and part of his research and he said, I've, I've found patterns in the astrological charts of people that have near death experiences. And you're one of those patterns. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so knowing that it's in my astrological chart as are many other things that I have discovered over the years that are in the chart, I would say part of our journey here are to experience certain things. Yeah. So I could not get rid of that near death experience. That was just part of my life. I was supposed to be sick. And this is how my life was supposed to play out in order to get me to where I am now. Yeah. Right. But it doesn't see. seem like that when you're going through and you're being sick and yeah. you don't know, is this something that's temporary? Is this something that was created by the environment? But even if it was created by the environment, or even if it was inherited on your DNA, it's still part of your life path that you incarnated for. I think there's two things there. One in the last one is part of your path. Yes, but it comes and was it, you know, the environment? Was it pollution? Was it something you ate? Was it, you know, a wound you had or something? But that's connection again with everything that is around you, not just people. But mm -hmm. you cannot not connect with the environment around you. You're breathing. It's happening. You're absorbing through your skin as you do. So you're part of what's going on around you. And maybe at the moment, with many parts of the world being so sick, we are absorbing some of the world's sickness as well. And it's coming mm. out in us. But what was really striking from both of you, it made me think of one, a story that, or story suggestion experience that I use with clients is now, if I told you to drive to Birmingham from now, but I didn't tell you where you were standing or where the car was standing, could you do it? And the answer is no, because I've got no starting point. Mm. You know, I could be in Texas, I could be in Britain, which Birmingham did I mean? But <laughs> never mind. Um, you know, where am I? Am I in Shropshire, where I live? Or am I in London? Because the route to Birmingham from each is quite different. And this seeing where you are, which you're both talking about, particularly you, Lottie, was like, that's finding your starting point. And that is so important to me and what I help enable guided people to find for themselves is where are you actually? And very often it's not where you think you are. It's, you know, you've got to go back in and find these things that came through with your ancestors and came through with your life experiences through until that brought you here. And gradually you have to do those. You have to find them and see them. But I would not say you're going to have to accept that happened. You know, like you were saying about being sick. I mean, uh, I've been sick for 30 odd years. I've got rheumatoid arthritis and I've accepted that. And when I stopped fighting it and trying not to have it, then everything got a lot easier. Mm. I didn't lose the disease. I still got it, but I was able to work because I knew where I was and accepted where I was. Mm. That's beautiful, Ellen. And I think that that's something that, I have been working on too is accepting where I am with my various I, I don't even like to use the word sickness dis ease not disease but dis ease in my body and so many of us are not aware or we focus too much on it and we all know we all know at least what you focus on increases and increases and increases, but it's very challenging. Even for those of us who know that we shouldn't, it's really challenging not to. Yeah. 
but I, but awareness, like you said, and I think people need guides such as the two of you, Ellen, with your magic and Dr. Lottie with your, well, let's see your med school, all of your other degrees and all the other, you know, modalities that you work with. And me, I'm just a person, you know, I feel like I don't have those. <laughs> oh, you potential. do, you do, Kim, you know, you ignite, you ignite people's sparks. What do you think that is if it isn't magic? <laughs> well, it is magic. And I think I was born with it as, as we all were born with the gifts that we have. Dr. Lottie had to go through what she had to go through so that you could get to med school at 54 and help those. And to me, that is one of the most inspiring things, one of the episode I did with you is one of my most listened to because people are fascinated by the fact that, and inspired, someone can go to med school at the age of 54. Wow. I mean, it, it, but the thing that I think everyone needs to know who's listening is that every single person, every single person has a gift has a gift and if you have been unable to unleash it then that's where you need to do the deep dive into your ancestral lineage with you know dr lottie or with ellen sessions to find that and even those of us who kind of know we need i need that everybody needs we're, we're here learning every single day of our human lives and you all and hopefully i'm doing the same i just don't consider myself in that same realm but let's all say we're magic. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but I think everybody <laughs> needs that. I don't know. I got off on some tangent there, as I do. Everybody is definitely magical. And I always tell people that because we all incarnated to do something here on earth. We yeah. all have a mission. And yours is clearly to ignite the spark in other people. You bring yeah. that spark to people right literally because every time I see you on Instagram it's like wow it's such <laughs> like it's so light and it's so lively and always brings a smile to my face that you incarnated to help people see the beauty in every day and to ignite their spark but that's your I mean it's a huge thing to do that so I guess but that's everybody the thing. has yeah some it of us don't recognize right it seems trivial sometimes to the person who's doing it, but to everybody else, it's not, mm -hmm. but it's just how we view ourselves. And if you view it that way, then ask yourself how your ancestors viewed them. How did your mother view herself? Because yeah. it comes from that. It's all about this, your own experiences combined with your mom's experiences and your grandma's experiences and all the people that came before you and what they experienced. Because remember that egg in your mother's womb that she made when she was a you know, 20 week fetus <laughs> and you're right. What was going on in your grandma's life at that time? And all those, all those things you inherited via the DNA. Yeah. And then all your life experiences as you, as a child, the way you were taught to be the good little girl, no, no, good little girls don't speak back. The good little girls, you know, to takes care of everybody else, <laughs> right. Yeah. To be the, the woman that we were expected to be back in the time when we were raised. Right. So I was born in the late 1950s. I grew up in the 1960s. Same. What was expected of me as a girl in Scandinavia when I grew up? Exactly what I said. You know, you're a good little girl. You don't spill. You help set the table. You clear the table. You serve other people. You put yourself last. All those things. And then you grow up to be an adult. And in today's world, that doesn't work anymore. So mm -hmm. you have to you have to untangle all those things that you learned as a child. Because also what you're expecting out of the relationship when you're in a relationship with somebody else now you're married but you're doing the same thing because you learned to do the, all those things as a child and now you're doing all of that for your husband and then many times I hear women say well you know my husband doesn't really see me he doesn't hear me he doesn't understand me well guess where that's coming from that's coming from your mother the way you were raised and now you're transposing that behavior that mm -hmm. you did for your mom onto your husband yeah. and so he doesn't see you because you were raised that way. You were raised not to be seen, not to be heard, put yourself last. So it's fascinating when you're working with people and, and help them step into uh, unleashing, like you said, unleashing their life path. Because once you see your hindrances or the, the hurdles, as I call them, it's just another hurdle. Yeah, we Life is full of hurdles and 
sometimes we have a lot of hurdles. It's like we're just jumping and, you know, jump every week. There's a new hurdle. And then we get like a nice smooth surface for a while. We get to run freely. And then another set of hurdles come. Yeah. yeah. And it's that's just like, life. that's so true yeah. because and it's taking me again to where you came in, Kim, is connection. Yeah. Because the way we each see this is when we have a connection with someone else who mm. points it out to us, shows it to us, just as you were then, Lottie. And and it's what I try and do with people. So say, well, where does this come from? Where are we going with, you know, where have you come from with that? What do you remember from your past? Where is it? And what has made this happen for you now? And then this sort of thing, I'm, I'm a gardener as well, which I know both of you know, and some of our listeners certainly will, is like, well, do you, you know, do you really need to carry that around or can you compost it? Can you put this in the compost caddy and then in the compost bin so that, because what happens when you put, you put all this rubbishy old vegetables that you haven't eaten, that you didn't want to eat, you know, the roots of the cabbage and all that, and you put it in the compost caddy, and then it goes in the bin and all sorts of amazing creatures in nature do things with it, as well as the energy of the sun and the energy of the earth, which will work on it too. And, you know, in a few months time, you've got the most fantastic growing medium, this soil that you can plant new stuff in. Mm. And so I try, and, well, I don't try, I show people this idea and say, how about you put that old habit, because you don't need it anymore. You're not with your mum. You don't need to lay the table. You don't need to wash the dishes. So pop that in the compost caddy. And the next habit is a little bit hard to get, but it will gradually turn into something else. The habit that's really hard to get after that is to stop poking in the compost caddy to see if it's all right and whether it's still changing <laughs> or what. Leave it alone and go and do something different. And of course, we don't do that. We've got a lovely sort of joke phrase about that um, in Britain. There's this farmer, this old farmer James, you know, when he was there, certainly, and he planted a load of onions down in his field. And he was really worried whether those onions were growing or not. So every night he would go out and he'd pull them up just to see how they were growing. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, it's one of those things you keep pulling them up, they ain't going to grow, mate. Yeah. And if you keep poking in the compost caddy, it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Leave it to the lovely worms and compost beings and everything like that. Leave it to the earth energy. Leave it to the sun energy. Leave it alone. Let it go. But isn't letting go one of the hardest things in the world to do? Mm, yeah. Ellen, I have a question, and this goes back to what Dr. Lottie was saying about our ancestral lineage. You grew up in a witch lineage. <laughs> I was a born witch. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just curious, you know, we are of that age. And my hope is that the next generation or the generation after that or the generation after that, I mean, sure, we gave them all our, all our crap too, but not hopefully as in the same way. But Ellen, you grew up as a witch and you were obviously aware of certain things. Do you still feel like you have that baggage that so many of us have or not as much? Uh, I'm sure I've got baggage. I know I've got baggage. Um, I am a human being and human beings tend to have baggage. And I'm still carrying it, but as a psychotherapist, as you all know, I cannot work alone. I must have a mentor who I go to. I must have someone that I go to, that I take my cases to, that I take myself to. Um, and she is able to help me find my space on the map, hmm. help me put my baggage into the compost. And so again, it's the connections. I can't do this without connecting to another human being. Being a witch, I also connect to my cat who is black. So yeah, I, I, follow, the, I follow the tradition there. I've got a black cat. And any of us who've got animals who've decided to live with us, you can take your problems to them. 
and mm. I do know to go and take my problems to the oak tree that's just down the lane from me or to my pond and my waterfall um, or go and sit in a lovely shady spot that I've got in the garden or go and climb. I've got lovely hills near me. So I might go and climb to the top of a hill and it's, you know what it's like. It's up there and you've got views for miles and fantastic air and hopefully nobody much about it except the birds. And I can take my problem there. And that's something that I brought with me from my childhood. It's like I was told, you've got a problem. Go and talk to the tree. Go and talk to the <laughs> river, the stream, um, and other sorts of bit, things like that. And I kept that with me. But I don't know how many people do nowadays. Right. Well, well we're teaching them. Don't. We're guiding them today. Everybody listening. You know, a lot of what we do is give people permission. Yes. We give people permission. Go out and talk to your tree. It's okay. I talk to my plants. It's right yes. here. And I think that that is what people are looking for. Yes, they are looking for inspiration. They are looking for magic. So we have the woman who went to med school at 54, the woman who was a born witch, me who somehow is able to ignite sparks and bring laughter and joy to people. We were, those are gifts we came with, yeah. even though Dr. Lottie, it took you many years to realize that. And we're giving people permission. So everybody listening, you have permission to go out and talk to a tree. You have permission to see someone else. It used to be that people thought of as psychotherapists or therapy as, ooh, bad, I can't do that. We all need someone. We all need someone to turn to. Yeah. 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 And the word psyche, of course, is the name for a spirit. And it is it means breath and spirit in Greece. Mm. And when we think of that and, you know, and therapists, therapist comes from the word therapist, which is also Greek. And that means someone who walks alongside. Mm. So if you put those two together, that this is a spirit that walks alongside us. Not in front, pulling, not behind, pushing, not saying this way, man, and, you know, from out in front, but. I feel myself, I call myself a co-pilot with my clients as well. And I feel that it's that, that they've got somebody beside them they can talk to. They've got somebody who is not going to judge, who is going to say, not okay, that things are okay, but who is going to help them see where they properly are. And so possibly we need, part of what we need to do is to, refurbish words like psychotherapist yeah you know and if you need if you if you need a psychotherapist it doesn't mean to say you're bad rotten ill or anything like that it means you need a helper you need someone to walk alongside a spirit to walk alongside you yeah yeah That's i couldn't it. agree more with the talking yeah. to the trees talking to the plants talking to the animals i do this all the time and I think, you know, I have since I was a young child. But like you said, it's giving permission to to do that. And I think we forget sometimes that everything is alive. The tree mm -hmm. is alive. The plant is alive. The flower, the animals understand us. The like if you have a dog, the dog is your is the mirror to your own nervous system. And so if your dog is misbehaving, for example, the, the dog is picking up on your trauma that you had in the past. And it was a great book that was written by Ke uh, Kevin Bean. Mm -hmm. The dog is your mirror. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic book. And he, he shows how, um, you know, the owner, when the owner brings a dog in and says, you know, my dog has this problem. He already knows that it's not the dog. It's never the dog. The dog is picking up on the nervous system of the person. And it's all the trauma that the person had that the dog is picking up on. So it's a fascinating book for anybody who is interested in that. But also, as humans, we co-regulate with other people and their nervous system. So a young baby that comes in, 
that is born into a household that there's a lot of yelling and screaming and it's not stable, that baby is probably crying a lot because that baby is trying to co-regulate its nervous system with the mom. Mm -hmm. Well, if the mom is not calm, then the baby is not going to be calm. And anybody out there who's had children or try to put a baby to sleep and you're stressed and you're thinking of all the things, it it never works, right? You have to go into that calm zone in order to make the baby fall asleep because they're co-regulating. But we're also co-regulating with each other in society as a whole, right? So what's going on in the world right now? People are on edge. There is a lot of people with increased anxiety because of all the things that are going on in the world. We went through the pandemic and political uh, issues, and it's just feel the world is unstable in general. But for people who are interested in the plant, there is a great book. It was called um, The Intelligence of the Heart in the Direct Perception of Nature by Stephen Harrod Booner. And in that book, he shows that our heart emits transmissions and we co-regulate with the plants and we co so we co-regulate with other living forms, whether it has a heart or not. Mm -hmm. And so that's a fascinating book. And that again shows what Ellen was talking about. Just go talk to the river, just go talk to the tree. And she came into the world with that, knowing that, or that's how she was taught, but the ancestors we're much closer to nature than we are today. And we have forgotten the connection that we have with everything. So we are connected to all the animals, all the plants, all vegetation, all the food that we eat, and to all the other humans. We are constantly co-regulating with everything that is. Mm -hmm. And so what you send out to other people, right? Your own nervous system is also, if you go into, if you go to the city and everybody, there's a big demonstration and people are yelling and screaming, you get more on edge and you're kind of looking around, get more hypervigilant, looking who's behind you, right? But if you go into a, a meditation center, the trickling water in the background, everybody's in deep meditation, calm and peace, right? Now, all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, oh, thank God, this, this is what I needed. And so yeah. it just shows you know, how we co-regulate with everything that is around us. And if you go into nature, listen to the birds, touch the tree, take your shoes off. Um, you know, we, we then we ground and we become part of that forest, part of that nature. Yeah. 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 That's so true. It is. It makes me want to run outside right now, barefoot in the grass. You know, it's interesting because I have been reading about earthing and I got an earthing pad because where I live currently, it's a house, but there's no grass anywhere. There's rocks and a little bit of dirt, which I've been trying to sit in to sort of heal and ground myself. But as a kid, I grew up in Miami, Florida. I never wore shoes, never. I was outside all the time, all the time, in the pool or on the grass or playing outside. My high school didn't have a gym. It was a small girl's school. We did everything outside. And I was never sick. I never missed a day of school the my entire life from going to school through 12th grade, not one day. And I was beginning, this just came to me a few days ago when I'm like dealing with other issues. And it's because we, I was close to nature all the time. I really believe that there is so much healing to be found in nature. Just had to say that. <laughs> I know, I totally agree with you. And nowadays I mean so many of us live in cities and we might have a, a, a plant and a pot in the house but we don't we probably don't even go out in the parks very much and you know we've been told that it's dangerous out there and there are people who are going to hurt us out there and so we don't go because we're afraid of something or we don't go because it's pollution or whatever reason we have but we do need to connect with everything else that is living I mean very small little well enormous little thing is if we don't have plants photosynthesizing we won't have any oxygen to breathe mm. and you need to go and connect with those plants consciously i think it's the consciousness yeah um because without them you wouldn't live right and people who don't have pets i think a great way this is just a little thing is go to an animal shelter, go somewhere and connect with an, you don't have to have it. You don't have to live with it, 
but just to get out and sort of connect with another being, yeah. another being, I guess. I mean, I don't know whether you do in America, but I mean, here, if you go to a park in a city, there will be squirrels. There might even be rabbits. Yeah. Um, uh, there will certainly be birds. And they're there. And you can just, if you just sit still by a tree and just sit there, they, you'll see them. They'll come around because you're not galloping around and being making frightening energy by rushing about. And you'll see them. And they'll stop and look at you. I mean, the squirrels do around here. And they'll sort of go. And you get all these expressions. And yes, they do have expressions. And you will get all this feel of them, that you, they've connected with you. Yeah. Back to that theme of connection. Yeah, absolutely. And we so need it, don't we? Is that? Is that a sort of place where we should stop for this session and say, go out and connect everybody? Yeah, connect. connect. And, you know, I've said it many times, Ellen, just send someone unexpected an unexpected note. Yep. Connect. Connect some way because it will ignite your spark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, what little tiny tip would you give, Lottie? Absolutely. I think connection is really important and um i see a lot of people have or was very isolated during the pandemic and um, they could not have their regular visitors or their children that came to visit uh, for fear of, of becoming sick now after the pandemic is mostly over for most people um i think that's that connection is such an important thing because if we can't connect with other people um, you know, we get so lonely and they say here in the United States, the anxiety and, and loneliness is on the rise. Mm -hmm. And people have also changed from the pandemic because our nervous systems got actually got reset during the pandemic. And so that all the people that were very isolated that are now going back out mm -hmm. into traveling or going to the mall um, might feel completely overwhelmed because it's they're not used to it. They're used to everything being very calm and still inside their home. Mm -hmm. And so they sort of have to reset their whole nervous system. So it's actually a physical issue as well, not just an emotional component to it. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know, my advice would be, you know, go slow if that is your case and uh, connect with people uh, where you can. If it's outside in a park, meet someone, um, try to try to just get out there. You know, go sit in, sit in a park bench if you don't want to go inside a mall or yeah. a, a big store that has a lot of noise and, and um, traffic, yeah. you know, people traffic. Just yeah. go out and be in nature. You'll still see people. You can say hello to somebody, uh, buy an ice cream or you know, yeah. a cup of coffee or tea or something. Yeah. But just, you know, slowly get yourself back out there. Yeah, I would say the same, but I would also say little things. And this isn't one, but one is like, pick up your phone. Hi, I just felt like connecting. Yeah. And you'll be amazed the response that you get from that. I work a lot online. And so I've got a lot of like connections on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. But I just go in there and say, hey, how is everybody this morning? I'm feeling like this. What's the weather like where you are? How are you connecting? And yes, actually you do get responses back and you've made a connection so yeah we'd all say make connections please make connections now, in the show notes you will have how to connect with each of us and i'm rather hoping that we might do this again perhaps next month and talk to you all and with our latest tips what's happening for us and see how it all goes but everything about us will be in the show notes and we'd love to speak to you we'd love to connect with you so please do see you next time cheers bye